we've already talked about Logan Gilbert this season, Lyle, but that performance he had Saturday in Houston was another step. Eight shutout innings. The strikeouts weren't through the roof, but his repertoire and stuff continue to amaze me week after week after week. And this Cy Young picture, this Cy Young sort of reality, if Logan Gilbert keeps this up throughout the rest of the season, it is no longer just a dream for Logan Gilbert to compete for something like that because the way he's pitched, he's almost certainly in the conversation down the stretch run. If Logan Gilbert's on a stairway to heaven right now, he keeps passing thresholds to get to the top of the mountain and the top of the staircase. Eight shutout against the Astros is another one of those steps. You go into Houston, into that ballpark, bam box of a stadium, loud crowd, and he just silences them. Mixed up his pitches incredibly well, threw strikes, had hitters off balance. It just builds up on everything he's already done. His ERA now sits just below 1.7. In seven starts, he's got just below a 1.7 ERA, and his K per nine is close to the highest of his career right now. He has taken, I mean, I don't know how many different times we can say it. He has taken monumental steps here in 2024 so far. So just updating on on Logan Gilbert's stats. Quality starts, he's tied for first. Innings, he is, as of Saturday night, he was first. ERA, is fifth in the league in ERA. His whip is also fifth. His OPS is fifth in the league. And his strikeouts is tied for fourth. Limiting on base, limiting damage striking guys out, and more importantly, shouldering an inning load. We haven't seen Mariners pitchers throw this many innings as Logan Gilbert has thrown in this first month of the season. Did you want, when you thought about how Logan Gilbert has pitched this month, and he didn't win pitcher of the month, Barrios won pitcher of the month instead for the Blue Jays. He had a really good month, though. I think he's due to regress. Anyways, that's besides the point. I I was thinking back to when Logan Gilbert won the, the American League Pitcher of the Month of in April of 2022. How stark of, of a difference those two months were. Do you realize he only threw 22 innings in that month of April in 22? That's it. He was on more of an innings limit back then. He hadn't thrown a full season in 2021. They were still working him in in 2022. But now it's all systems go. And now he's pitching deep in the games. Very deep in the game. Also, by by OPS, you threw out that stat. You mean OPS against, right? OPS against, Gilbert? yeah. Well, he's not, yeah, he's not swinging. Yeah. I don't think Logan Gilbert could swing much of a bat. No offense, Logan. I think, no. I think he's best suited to be on the mound. No, I don't think so either. But it, it's remarkable because the difference between him then and him now is he has the tools to go deeper into games. Here's a bonkers stat for you. If you're curious, like you sit there and you watch Logan Gilbert pitch and you're like, man, he's nasty. He's got five pitches dialed at all times that he can pull up whenever he wants. This is not even including his fastball, which gets up to 99 miles an hour. I went and I was poking around stuff plus. All four of his secondary pitches, splitter, cutter, slider, and curveball, are top 10 in baseball among qualified pitchers. Top 10 of four different pitches. I didn't even bother checking this because I know he is the only one in the top 10 of all four. There is no pitcher who's got the stuff like that. Four different secondary pitches that are all top 10 stuff pitches in baseball. And it was almost top five across the board. One was seven, one was eight. But the other two were top five. How remarkable is that? Dude's a different breed. And it's amazing because he mixes everything in so well, too. This year, what you're seeing is all five of Logan Gilbert's primary pitches, those four secondaries you just named, and his four-seamer. He throws all of them 10% of the time or more. That wasn't always the case. There was some variance in the pitch percentages and how often he was throwing certain offerings in years past. He's got a good, healthy balance to all those pitches right now. And, And you know how hard it is if you're a hitter and you have to try and gear up for five different pitches that are all basically deadly. No wonder nobody's hitting Logan Gilbert this year. It's one thing to have the stuff on him, but it's another thing when you're throwing it with confidence and conviction and command like he is right now, and he's, and he's mixing it all up. So that all combined and the, and the combination of all of that, look at what he's doing. He's trending his way to the all-star game right now. 
What do you let's look past the all-star game. What do you think? What are your ingredients for Logan to go for that Cy Young? I think war is a big one. Fan graphs war for us is number one. But if we're just going to look at more traditional stats, he right now is on pace to blow past both 200 innings and 200 strikeouts. Neither of those are given nowadays with how much less pitchers are, how many less innings pitchers are throwing. And if he's one of four guys who crosses the 200 innings mark, that's not insignificant. He's on pace to go past the 200 innings mark right now. And it's also going to help if the Mariners stay in first place. If he's winning, he's pitching meaningful ball games against good baseball teams and games that matter. We've seen what's happened with Felix in 2014 when he goes out there in a big game and gets shelled down the stretch and when the Mariners needed him the most. And it seems like at this point, Logan Gilbert, based on how the Mariners are playing, are going to have are going to give him opportunities to make statement games. Statement games move the needle with voters who won't stay up and watch your games. If if an East Coast rider is checking a box score at the end of the night and sees that Logan Gilbert threw seven innings of one run ball in a crucial game against the Texas Rangers in September, he's going to be like, yeah, without even needing to watch it, even if Logan Gilbert walked four batters like he has in two of his last three starts, it won't matter because he's gotten the job done. And you can leave the nitpicking for the uh, the podcasters like us. Right. Yeah, what's it going to take for him to get all those East Coast votes for actual East Coast writers to stay up and watch these starts and say, oh, this guy out in the Pacific Northwest, he deserves it this year. Not the guy in pinstripes who I sit and watch every single day. Will people now, actually give him the recognition? Now, I don't think they'll actually stay up and watch, but you know what's going to help Logan Gilbert's case? Let me rattle off some names who are the top 10 in ERA in the American League right now. Jose Barrios who, again, I think is going to regress, Cutter Crawford, Seth Lugo, Tariq Skubal, Bryce Miller, Renell Blanco, Tanner Houck, Tyler Anderson, and Brady Singer. Logan is in that top, is in that group, but that's a given. Well, Bar- oh, so Barrios, like who- Barrios and Crawford are both East Coast guys, and they're, I think they're one and two right now. They are one and two right now. But are any of those name brands? No, but they're, those two are East Coasters. Barrios is a name. Kind of. But again, I, I, I would be shocked if Jose Barrios is on this top 10 list at the end of the year. Yeah, he's due for some regression. You're right. Yeah. So great. I, like, there are a couple things Logan Gilbert can still fine-tune a little bit. He was walking less guys last year. Uh, last year, that can still come down a little bit. But the strikeouts, the innings, the duration of games he's pitching, the pitch mixes he has... Can we talk about his fastball too? Well, you just talked about his secondary pitches, but the dude's fastball last year, it didn't have the effect that it's had in years past. We know he throws it hard. We know it's, we know it's got some life. Last year was getting hit around a lot. Like if, and if you want the exact numbers on it, guys slugged almost 500 against his fastball last year. It was getting hit hard. That's not happening this year. Now it's back to the fastball that we all raved about in his rookie year and part of his second year too. Now it now it's got guys totally off balance. Guys are hitting 167 right now against Logan Gilbert's fastball. So you've got four secondary pitches that are in the top 10 in terms of stuff in the whole league. And you've got a four seam fastball that's dirty. Five pitch mix that is all lethal. There's not a lot of pitchers in baseball doing that. One that does happens to be in his own rotation and George Kirby. But there are not a lot of guys with five pitches like that. Not at all. And it's funny, it, like it's funny that Kirby comes up because Kirby's the one in the off season. We made a, a very one of our more popular Instagram videos where we're high to like George Kirby has seven pitches with that knuckleball. It's insane. Who else does this? And then here's Logan Gilbert with mastery of five, mm-hmm. ultimate mastery of five, and it's just as effective, even if seven. Five. I'm trying to think who else in baseball has four plus secondary pitches. Kirby doesn't plus pitches. Let's see. It's Shohei, right? And that like who yeah. else? That's what I was gonna say. Well, Shohei, I don't think Scherzer and Degrom have four secondaries like that. Four plus secondaries. That's the key. Right. That's a key key term there. Right, right. And that's what I mean by four secondaries like that. Four, yes, four plus secondaries, four lethal secondaries. It's not many. How many pitches? Darvish maybe in his past? How many pitches does Zach Wheeler throw? 
Let's see. It's a good question. I'm going to look it up while we talk here, but yeah, yeah I, the the answer is very few. There are not many that are doing what Logan Gilbert's doing. Zach Wheeler throws how many different pitches? He throws in total six, but yeah, like the value on these pitches, it's it's not what Logan Gilbert's doing. It's mm-hmm. not. So like he he it's you could you could say it's him and Otani then with that and only one of them's pitching this year. Yeah. So dude's got a chance at the Cy Young. Got, like don't take what Logan's doing for granted with the stuff. Like this is as best case scenario outside of him being a Hall of Famer as you can get with a first round pick. Like mm-hmm. think like all the work he has had to do from the point he was drafted where he was a fastball curveball guy at Stetson to get where he is now and the fastball is a technical secondary pitch of his even though that was not in the thing I just framed of four plus secondaries. Like he is every single one of those pitches he added weren't really, or at least not the current version of it was not part of his repertoire when he was drafted. This has been on Logan Gilbert's to tinker and develop while he's been a Mariner. And it's, it's been truly remarkable. And it, and it truly ends up that this is a bet. When you draft a pitcher in the first round, this is the best case scenario you can have. The Mariners have two examples of that in the rotation right now in Kirby and Gilbert. First round pick, you want a bona fide stud with a deep arsenal. And the Mariners have not one, but two of them, and they drafted them in consecutive seasons. You know, lefties are OPSing under 500 against Logan Gilbert right now. Well, if, I hit left, I, if I hit left handed, I'd also struggle against Logan Gilbert. He Nobody hits him, period, right now, but lefties hitting under 500 or OPSing under 500 is crazy. And to your point about the pitch mix, he didn't throw the cutter till this year. That cutter's awesome. Took him one off season to master that thing. There's not a lot of pitchers out there that can just do that. He's got one more stat working on his side when it comes to Cy Young's. So the, you're familiar with strand rate, stranding base runners on base. The top two in the league last year, in all of baseball last year, in terms of strand rate, a little bit over 80%. Were the two Cy Young winners, which was Garrett Cole and Blake Snell. They both they eat the, they were the top two in baseball in terms of stranding runners they allowed. Logan Gilbert right now is second in the American League in strand rate behind Jose Barrios. Which, if you strain a lot of runners, it's going to be really hard for you to give up runs, and that's why the two of them have extremely low ERAs. Logan Gilbert's not going to strain ninety three and a half percent of the runners he allows all season long. That is almost impossible. But if he can somehow stay above 80, then he's in Cy Young contention at the end of the season. Because then his ERA is going to be like 2-3 at that point. Because he's just frankly not going to allow a whole lot of guys to score. And if you have an ERA of 2-3 and you're doing what Logan Gilbert's doing and pitching as deep into games, that's that's a Cy Young recipe right there. So that's a, that's a number to keep a lookout when Logan Gilbert is marching down the stretch of the season. Is he keeping runners away from home play home play. I mean, like not allowing runs runs are bad. There was a lot of people on this Logan Gilbert hype train preseason saying this is the year he takes the big step. And everybody so far seems to be absolutely right. I hope it keeps rolling. I think it's going to.